Okay, what I'm going to do here is open up my text hierarchy project. See if we can find it again, just to get an idea of what we're looking at. Do, 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 do. There it is. And the whole purpose of this now, once you guys are finally getting to the point where you're uh, getting finished with your projects, those that are done today, by the way, we're going to critique it. Uh, you're going to get critiques from me. We might throw it up here on the board to show everybody, just because there's only a few I think that are finished by now. Um, and today, we're going to work on finishing our designs, packaging all the font files, and also uh, how to organize all your layers again. So we're kind of turning in our first big boy Photoshop project, or big girl Photoshop project. Um, so let's take a look at it here. Right off the bat, if you open up a file, uh, Creative Cloud asks you, do you want to import character styles, colors, layer styles, also text. Um, at least here they've got some kind of an issue with the network, so I usually just cancel out of this, but know that you can create libraries and use a lot of these fonts, styles, colors across different systems. It's all cloud-based, which is kind of nice. So if you have a uh, color palette that you like to use, uh, different swatches, different um, character styles that you want to use, and different fonts, you can use that in a cloud-based system uh, on your own to make all that work through Creative Cloud. We'll revisit that another day. But to start off, here's uh, the project we have. And the idea here is if you give this Photoshop file to a client without giving them the fonts, as soon as they open it up, it'll have a little uh, exclamation caution sign here that says this text isn't actually there on your system, which means if you try to edit it um, or add or play with the effects on it, it's going to rasterize that. And it'll give a little pop-up window that says, do you want to rasterize this? Of course, as some of you have found out, if you do rasterize, there it is, if you do rasterize your type, it's no longer type. Now it's just an image of that type. You can't edit the characters inside of it anymore. It just turned it into a bitmap layer. So what we want to do instead is we want to find out what fonts we're using. And an easy way to do that is just to expand your text file, go into it, and double click to highlight it on that little T. And notice as soon as it highlights, it'll tell me this is Optima Regular. And what we're looking for is the font family is Optima, and the style or the specific font is Regular. So if you have a typeface, that's going to be a font family, um, i.e. Arial. And then your specific font is going to be Arial Black, Arial Narrow. All those different versions of Arial are right there. So in Optima, I'm using Optima Regular, and that's what I want to pull from my system so people can use that. Um, an easy way to do that is just kind of write it down on your own. So I need Optima Regular, and I also need, what's my subheader? Arial Rounded MT Bold, and also for my header, uh, impact. So we want to find these fonts on our system. And an easy way to do that on a Mac is to pull up your font book. I'm just hitting command space for spotlight or you can click up here again in that little side section. And I'm going to type in font book. And what this program is for is it's kind of like a font preview program. You won't be able to drag files directly from here but you can use it as a tool to find out what you have on your system and where it lives. So in this sense I needed, uh, what was that, Optima regular? I can just search in my font book for Optima Regular. And there it is right there. There's a preview of it, but I can't really do anything with this. What I can do is right click on it or control click and go to Show in Finder. And what that does is, of course, shows where this font file is in the Finder. And what you see here is a couple different <coughs> font files. This one is .ttc. And that stands for True Type Collection. So what this font has is not just Optima Regular. It also has all the different versions of Optima, which is fine. It's just a nice little uh, compact file. What you also might find is some versions uh, might be a .ttf, and that stands for True Type Font. So if you ever see a .ttf, .ttc, .otf, those are types of font files. So in this case, I want that font file. So instead of dragging and dropping from here onto the desktop, um, in some versions that will uninstall the font file. You don't want to remove it from your system. You just want to copy it. So you can right click, copy it, and instead 
put it somewhere you can easily find it, like desktop or documents, right click and paste it, and there's a copy of my TTC file. Next, let's do the same thing for the other ones. The subheader here is going to be Arial Rounded MT Bold. I can even just copy that and paste that in the font book and find it. Boom, there it is. You can just right click on it and again, show in Finder. It takes me right to the font file, which is a .ttf version, so it's just a single font in that typeface. And again, you can Command C to copy, Command V to paste. And we'll do the last thing with impact. So you want to do this with every single font that you're using because not everybody is going to have the same fonts that you are. You're going to have a lot of similarities, but never 100%. Finally, we're looking for impact. So let's go to the font book and find it. Right click on it and show in Finder again. There it goes. Command C to copy and heading back to the desktop. Command V to paste. So now what I've got are these three font files, and I'm going to go ahead and close some of those windows. And finally, I'm going to go back in my finder to where this file is saved. And there it is, that text hierarchy. Command C, Command V, I'm just going to paste it all here on the desktop. Um, so what you want to do when you turn in this file is last class we looked a little bit organizing your layers, so make sure you do have your layers grouped and organized. You want this as clean as possible. For me, I've got a little error here. The cat's not named. I can name that cat. If I'm not using the uh, blank background canvas, I'm hiding and unhiding, it's not doing anything, you can actually just delete that. So all you have now is your background layer and your fonts on top. If you have foreground layers, go ahead and put those up. But you can color code those about the same. All image layers, for example, could be, uh, could be blue. All text layers could be red. Just whatever coloring scheme you want to use. All right, so now that I've got all that, the final step we want to do for packaging this is also to save a version as a PSD file. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on my desktop. I'm sorry, as a JPEG file or a PDF. Kind of whatever you guys would like to use, I'm fine with, as long as it's a flattened version. So for me, I'm going to pick a JPEG. And it's the exact same file, just in a different format. Remember, a PSD is going to allow me to show you or see the layers and all the different uh, organizations you have. But if I want to do a quick preview, it's going to be, uh, it's going to take a lot to download the file for everybody. You know, if you have a class of like 15, 16 students, it takes a long time to download these huge files because they're 300 uh, pixels per inch PPI. So it's nice to have a little quick JPEG preview that I can just pull up. So the whole idea now is we've got our PSD file and we want to put that in the same folder with all of these guys. Easy way to do that, you can just right click on your desktop or any, uh, any place in Finder, make a new folder, and we can name that. Um, this would be my name dash text hierarchy. All right, and now I can put all of those files into one folder. And finally, notice I'm leaving out the JPEG. We'll get to that in a second. Finally, you can right click on that folder and compress it. And now, this is a packaged folder inside of this zipped folder. If you right-click any folder, any collection of files, and compress them, it's going to make it into a zipped uh, folder. This, you can email as one single file. Um, you can upload it um, if you want to to different, uh, you know, different things like our Dropbox. And the reason you need to do that is if you have a collection of files, it won't let you upload an entire folder unless it's zipped because it thinks you're trying to go into that directory and upload separate fonts and separate files. So I want everything just in one nice, nice neat little folder. Right click on it, compress it, and you get a zip file. And that's what you're going to upload along with your JPEG. The reason I left out the JPEG is because um, I want those two separate files. One where I can see everything you've done in Photoshop all of your font files collected that I can install in my system. And one that we can just look at for a quick preview. So if I'm scanning through it, we can pull it up and critique it right away without having to download and install all those different fonts. Make sense, everybody? Perfect. All right, so this is what I'm talking about when you collect your files. And that's kind of the rhythm we're going to be doing for more advanced projects, uh, ones that have a lot of different files in different places. Um, other programs are going to allow you to collect them, and they'll do an automatic collection. But it's the exact same thing, just putting everything inside one folder and then compressing that folder for upload. 
and having a separate file that we can use for preview purposes, whether it's a .jpeg or later on if we do movies, like a uh, .mov for a video file. All right, the last question we've got with a lot of folks is, all right, that's great. We've got a font. We know how to collect those fonts. And finally, the question is, well, how do you find a new font and download a new font? Of course, with Photoshop, um, it's got a great little preview feature. I love having it. You can click the drop down here, and it shows you a preview before you even click it of what all these different fonts look like. Really nice and handy to have, but sometimes you don't just want to look through fonts. Really great feature in Photoshop, but just know that you can also use your font book for that. If you're not sure, or if your program doesn't have a preview feature like that, you can just open font book and really quickly see what your font is going to look like. But how to get new fonts on your system? Uh, the way to do that is I like to font.com. Anybody have any other suggestions of font websites they've used before? I've one of the thousand one fonts. Good. And anytime you're going to look for things to download, install on your system, make sure it's safe. If you don't know if a website is safe, it's easy to just Google it. Is defont.com safe? And you don't want to ch trust just the first couple links. Look at a few different links and make sure that it is safe uh, to use. Some people will report if they get viruses, they'll let you know, things like that. It's been pretty safe for me, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. But just know you can simply Google it or use your favorite search engine to find out what you want. All right, other than that, let's say you want something like a Transformers font. You can just search that font style or an Apple font or a Mercedes-Benz font, and you're able to get a return of a lot of different <coughs> options that you have here. You even have some, uh, some nice symbols you can use, which is great. But let's say you like one of these. Um, you can see on the side, at least here, if it's free for personal use, um, if you need to pay for, you know, a certain amount that you use, some people have, you know, it's set that if you sell you know, or if you make X amount of dollars from this, they get a little bit. So you want to make sure you know what the copyright is for that. And again, personal use means for your personal use. If you're making money from it for an actual design, you want to check with the author first, contact them and say, hey, I'm using your font. This is how I'm using it. Can we work something out? Usually they'll be happy just that you contact them. And they might say, okay, just include in the README, you know, if this font was by this person. So it's all about a little give and take. This one uh, down here, for example, 100% free, kind of nice to have. So I'm going to click on that and download it. And when I download it, it downloads in a zip file. If I open that zip file, let's go to it first. I can show in Finder. There it is. And to open a zip file, you can just double click on it, and it's automatically going to unzip and open in the same directory it's at. And inside that, I've got a JPEG preview, and I've got a text file that talks about the copyright um, of each. If we open that up, you'll be able to see what the copyright is for that. Font name, blah, blah, blah. This is freeware font for personal and professional use, so you can totally use that and make money from it 100% free if you want to. So it's good to read those font uh, those text files that have all of the uh, information about how to use the copyright. Finally, there's that TTF font. We're familiar with that now. We know it's a font file. Easy way to install that, just double click on it. And once you double click on it, it pops up a handy window that says, do you want to install it? Go ahead and install it. And now it's in your system, available to use. If you don't see it in your program right away, just restart your program and it should be in there. Uh, Kel, question? Good question. So the ones that already come with Photoshop, great question. Anything that comes with the program that you've paid for are yours to use. You can use Arial as many times as you want. Um, if you got Helvetica, that's kind of an overused font now, but there's a whole great documentary about Helvetica. I love it. Um, but yeah, anything, just treat it like clip art. Any font that you have that's on your system and a program you paid for, it's free to use. If you buy a GarageBand, for example, all those audio samples that are included in the program are free to use. In fact, uh, Rihanna, uh, Umbrella, her song uses an Apple loop that we'll pull up and look at when we get to the audio section. It's a lot of fun. Good question. Sure. It was just a Saturday Night Live skit about using like, Iris font for the Avatar movies. Okay. And like, the guy was like a graphic designer and he was like, like that everyone's bringing me out. They didn't even do anything to like change the font, it was just like, just making it. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's fun. But of course, you know, what works? Yeah. What works? Um, but I had a designer that says, always go do some research, get the feel of the fonts you want to use for whatever kind of feel you're going for for your audience, and go from there. Um, so if you did have a Transformers theme for your, you know, one-page ad, absolutely go out and find a Transformers font. Absolutely. So um, also, a lot of folks have the question, okay, now we know how to do it on a Mac. Again, you download it, double-click to install the TTF file, and now it's installed on your system. Um, and to package it again, you just find it in Fontbook. And, you know, we already walked through that whole thing. Right-click, find it in your finder, and you can copy that font file. Um, to do it on a Windows computer, um, this site's really helpful because right there on the home page, it'll tell you how to install. Uh, on a Mac, like we just did, you double-click the font file and install. On Windows computer, you can do the same thing. You can double-click and click install or right-click on the font file and install it. Where it goes on a Windows system is a little different. Uh, for Windows, it's going to be in C uh, Windows Fonts folder. So if you're on a PC, uh, you don't have font book, but you can still find where your fonts are, and that's C Windows Fonts if you want to write that down. In fact, I'll go ahead and do it as well. So Windows equals C directory. I forgot directory font names. Oops. Windows Fonts. That's where all your font fires are going to be on a Windows system. All right, so that's kind of the overview of what we're looking for. Any questions on this before we move on? All right, so just know, before you turn in your project, make sure you organize your layers, name them all, color code them, uh, find all those font files that you're using, even if they're basic fonts like Arial. I want to see you work through that process. And when you upload, I'm going to be looking for your font files and your PSD file all in a folder. Right-click on it to compress and upload that zip file and a preview version, whether it's JPEG or... Uh, PDF or PNG, it doesn't matter to me as long as it's a flattened version that I can pull up for a quick preview. All right.